Thank you. Okay, so uh, welcome you all to the Competitive Algebra Seminar. Uh, today we have with us uh, Professor Hema Srinivasan from University of Missouri, and she will speak on semi-group rings. Uh, at the end of her talk, we will have uh, question answers. But during the talk, of course, you can ask questions in the chat box, and uh, we will relay those to her. So, uh, Hema, over to you. Thank you, Jugal and uh, Jain Tan and Kirti for ably assisting them <laughs> too. So, uh, for organizing this uh, international community to algebra seminar, and uh, thank you for inviting me to uh, give a presentation. I had thought initially that this is a, a seminar with a lot of students, and so I've kind of prepared it like that. So maybe it is a little too elementary, some of the plots of it, perhaps, and didn't uh, I want to give an introduction to uh, the kinds of things that uh, on semi-group rings that I have been doing recently with uh, my uh, friend, uh, Philip Jimenez from um, Biodelaide. Okay, so uh, let me move and say uh, like that. So semi-group rings associated to matrices over positive integers. Well, I should say non-negative non integers, but oh no, positive integers I mean that could have, well, yeah. I said the n is the natural numbers which include zeros, so I would be happy to have zeros as part of the matrix if need be. So in general, maybe they're not. n is a semi-group with identity under addition. It's also a semi-group if I take an m, which is just a, like a vector. It's also a semi-group with identity under coordinate-wise addition. And we include that factor in it. That's just, I know most of the people, at least in uh, Bombay, will know that zero should be included, but some people don't. So I mentioned that. Now, C is a matrix over positive integers. Each of the P columns can be, so I should have said natural numbers. Each of the P columns of CJ can be thought of as an element of NM because it's a matrix, and then the elements of NM generate a semigroup of the additive semigroup NM. So this is what is called a semigroup ring. A semigroup ring is one where, which I always going to, if C is the matrix, I'm going to write K and join C for the semigroup ring. And then it is the product of Ti to the Bi, I going from one to M in this case, B1, B, B, Bi's are B1, B2, Bm, which is an element in the semigroup generated by C. This kind of bracket denotes the semigroup. So it's something that is contained in the polynomial ring K adjoint T1, T2, Tm, and is a semigroup ring associated to the matrix C. Since C and D times C are isomorphic as if the uh, semigroups, if I take the group or the semigroup, anything generated by two, multiplication by a number uh, is an isomorphism. And therefore, the, we might as well take there is no common factor for all the CIJs. So this is a notation uh, because we will be using this a lot, perhaps. So therefore, I say if A is something that is in NP, then I write TA for I going from 1 to P, Ti to the AI. The semigroup ring then is K to the C, where C is in T to the C, where C is in C. So there is a ring, and I want to write the semigroup ring as a, the, so when I say very dimension of the ring, is that you we write it as a polynomial ring model on ideal, and I want to know what is the uh, dimension of that. Uh, and like this one, what is the P? The semigroup of a ring associated with C is also called the homomorphic image of this. This is the image of this map. This is the map where Xi goes to. We sent a P of Xj to Ti to Ci, raised to Cij, I going from 1 to M. And that is 
the homomorphism and its image is the semigroup ring, which we already knew was in phi of t1 of 2, yeah. p in this case, yeah. yeah. So k adjoint c is therefore k adjoint x1 up to xp modulo ic, uh, which is, it's some, it's a, I see it's just a kernel of this um, homomorphism. So that's the ideal in the polynomial ring A join X1 up to XP. So I see is what? It's a finitely generated prime ideal because this guy is a domain, right? So therefore, this is the, still, we are still going on. The embedding dimension is P if the P columns of C minimally generate the semigroup C. For the most part, we will assume this, that the columns of C will minimally generate the semigroup or IC is in the square of the maximal ideal. So more about IC, what do we know? IC is a binomial ideal and there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the binomials in IC and the kernel of the map ZP to ZM given by multiplication by the metric C. So if I take D, which is in the kernel of the uh, idea of multiplication map, that means C times D is zero, which means summation Cij dj is zero, which means Ti to this sum, which is zero, every one of them is one, so this product is one, which means the things with the positive thing divided by the negative things, which is goes in the denominator, right, equals one, so then there is a difference between the numerator and the denominator is zero. And that means that uh, uh, the, this is the one that is in the numerator of this product of dj xj to the dj and product of dj xj to the minus dj is going to be the denominator, right? So that phi of that is zero, which means this element is in the idea. So this just says that all the polyno uh, binomials are coming from the kernel of this map. And it is a binomial ideal, so these will generate the idea. And then more notation on the basis of that, since we might be using it. So if I have an element in ZP, which is uh, which we write as things which are positive and things which are negative, and so I write x to the alpha like this, which is precisely this binomial. Okay, so where the x j to the alpha i, x i to the minus alpha i. So therefore, i c is just all generated by x to the alpha such that c times alpha is zero. The binomials are in one to one correspondence to do that. <coughs> we'll see that this is sort of helpful sometime later at this notation. So when p equals one, the semigroup is generated by a single element. And so it's just uh, the, it's just the entire, uh, non-negative integers and, uh, and therefore, and also the ring is k joint t, i c zero, the dimension is one. And so that if when d is in this, c times d is zero, then of course c times r d is zero, that's x d is in i c, so that's this bi binomial. So we, if w is a binomial, then we denote by w to the r the binomial x to the dr, which we might need. See, for example, if I this is in supposing x1 squared minus x3 x4 is there, is a binomial, and it's not really the square of it, right? So x1 to the 4 minus x3 squared x4 squared. If this is in that IC, so is going to be, so is this. That's what this RT is. So I write like that to make everybody multiply it by two. All the um, indices there okay now dimension of the semigroup ring is what is the dimension as a ring it is the dimension of this ring is rank of the metric c you can also prove this using induction i just thought we will write a, a different thing today Let's see if C is an M by P matrix as before, and KC is contained in T1 up to TM. And let's see be the rank of R. Now, IC is a binomial ideal. So the binomials, as we saw, were in one-to-one -one correspondence with C times A equals zero. And then there is an invertible matrix over integers such that MC is an upper triangular matrix with M minus R zeros and R columns to have just one non-zero entry. That's what we call the reduced row. Echelon form, right, for the metric C. 
and because of, and also uh, M is invertible and therefore KC is the same as the semigroup ring of the M times C because the ideal IC is the same as ideal MC. The binomials are the same, so the ideal is a binomial ideal, so they are equal. But what is this? This guy is exactly this ring, which is contained in where I, uh, you can permute the uh, TI and give them the different name SI um, to make them S1, S2, SR, say. And therefore, I have the dimension is R, the rank of the C. So we say an M by N matrix C of the semi group ring or the, any, any, any of these many things that uh, we use the same letter C for, say, the matrix and then the semi group or the semi group ring, we say is degenerate if the dimension is less than M, or which is the same as saying that the rank of C is less than M. Suppose uh, matrix C has a rank less than M, an M by P matrix or M by N matrix. Then the rows of C are not linearly independent over rational numbers. And then one of the rows, say the last one, is a linear combination of the others. So I write it as a linear combination of the first M minus one rows. And then I take out the D, which is uh, the denominator, common denominator, say, and then you can put it that side. So there is an element D in the natural numbers that's such that D times CMJ is equal to summation AICIJ. So if I remove C, the last row and get this metric C prime, it's going to have the same ideal IC prime times IC because when I just multiply it out, there's nothing uh, coming from the last row. And if these guys are zero, this will also be zero. Because this is a linear, if, if all of this is zero, then D times CMJ times uh, whatever A1, A2, A2, and I wrote, yeah, uh, is also Z. Therefore, KC prime is KC. That's so any symmetric C, there is a metric C prime consisting of just rank C linearly independent rows. The C prime is non-degenerate. So in many situations, we can assume that the semi-group ring is non-degenerate. The first part of the uh, proof. So if C is a one by N matrix, then it is C1, C to CN equals one. The semigroup is contained in N and it is known as the numerical semigroup. All numerical semigroup rings are non-degenerate because you know it's a one by N matrix, which is, which is not a zero matrix. Further, since the semigroup rings are also domains, we see all the numerical semigroup rings are automatically called Macaulay. I say in a slight paragraph saying numerical semigroups are well studied. We know when they are complete intersections. We have some understanding on when they are symmetric. And we have a good notion of when they are generated by arithmetic sequences. I know there are minimal resolutions and in some of these cases and other invariants. Now, but that doesn't mean, of course, we know everything about it. It's that sometimes it happens when things are uh, well studied, then many of the nice things that you can get is there, which is beautiful, and then it becomes a little hard maybe, or maybe you want to also look at something beyond uh, one dimension. And there's another way to see what, how much of that will actually move on. And uh, uh, which is something that uh, what I'm going to talk about now. But in the higher dimension, say even if you go to two, it may not always be called Macaulay. I just take this matrix A, then the ideal for that is going to have these five generators. You can also just find all the binomials and uh, because it's just solving A times X equals uh, zero where X is uh, uh, over integers, which we all know how to do. Or you can also use the computer program Macaulay, and that tells you uh, what the um, uh, resolution is. Then you can see this guy is uh, not called Macaulay. This is uh, the resolution, which is the projected dimension is three, not two, as it should have been. So in you have uh, automatically there's an, uh, already an issue in the dimension bigger than one. It can also be called Macaulay as one that is the ideal of this A 
is the ideal of this two, two by two minus of a two by three matrix, which we all know is called Macaulay. So it can also be that. So gluing of two semigroups, this is another technique. So let's see what it does. It's of getting the bigger understanding if you know something about small ones and you can put them together and then you get another one and maybe uh, some things can go through. So if you take two semigroups, A and B, which are again like a matrix or subsets of an N, Then we say that the semi-groups A and B can be glued if there exist two integers such that C is K1A union K to B. The ideal IC is IA plus IB, the ideal of A, ideal of B, plus exactly one guy that looks like the axis, the ones uh, that are in the first one, uh, one up to P, and then beta, which are the Ys that are one up to Q. Because the ideal, the ring K1 of A, it will have axis in the ring of B, I'm writing with Y, say, and then the binomial will have X to the alpha minus Y to the beta, and we remember this alpha and beta are elements not in ZP, but in MP and MQ. When this occurs, we will say C is a gluing of A and B, instead of saying it's a gluing of K1A and K1B because A is really isomorphic, this is a semi-group to K1A and K2B. We can always take this K1 and K2 to be relatively primary. We can remove that uh, constant uh, the factor right? because it's isomorphic. So the main thing that we should, uh, we'll come back to this in a bit. So here's an example. So I take uh, two semi-groups, these are numerical semi-groups and then I, this particular semi-group here, this with this K1 and this K2 is a gluing. I said that it is because of this, even though uh, my definition means I need to tell what the ideals are, but we'll see why that it is making sense. So B in this case is a complete intersection and A is not. The reason B is a complete intersection is this famous early theorem of uh, Jürgen Herzog how do we do that? Because I take this four and 10, they have a common factor, two, and I factor it out, factor it out, I get two and five, and two and five generate a semi-group in which nine is there, because nine is five plus two plus two. So five times uh, uh, five plus four. So therefore this is, that is what it makes, that's what makes this a uh, complete intersection, because this itself is a gluing of two and five, and the semigroup generated by two and five, which is a complete intersection, all semi numerical semigroups with two guys is a complete intersection, and then uh, with nine. And that's why this is a um, uh, this is a complete intersection, and this is not, because there's nobody, we can't do that to this. It's not a gluing of two smaller complete intersections, right? And so this is not a complete intersection. One of the theorems newly in the about gluing in numerical semigroups is on complete intersection. Remember, if you have just two guys, A and B, as just mentioned, then it is always a complete intersection because they've got only one ideal, uh, or one generator for it. It's a principal ideal, right? So in a numerical semigroup of embedding dimension P bigger than or equal to three, because two we already know it is, is a complete intersection if and only if it is a gluing of two smaller complete intersection. It is a direct generalization of that theorem of Jürgen Herzog I mentioned for those three elements. And it tells you that it, that's what is happening no matter what the P is. So we have these following four questions that I want to sort of say. Um, why, when can we, what can we glue? When can we glue? And why, which glue, if you give me a semi groups, which are gluings of two others? How do we glue two semi groups to get a new one? And what will it mean if we know that we have a gluing of two semi groups? Okay, that's kind of the last one is the one that is a little bit vague, maybe, but. There it is, it's, you could actually ask all these questions. 
In dimension one, in the case of numerical semigroups, we can answer all of these. So numerical semigroups are sub-semigroups of N. So if A and B are minimally generated the semigroups A and B respectively, then C is a gluing of A if and one layer, <coughs> excuse me, K1 is in the semigroup generated by B, but not in B, and K2 is in the semigroup generated by A, but not in A, and K1 and K2 are relatively prime. In, when this happens, and these guys are minimally generating A, and these guys are minimally generating the semigroup B, that there, there is no other relation between them. And then I pick K1 in this, but not in B, in the semigroup of A, but not in A, with K1, uh, then that case, the what I get, K1A union K2B, also have no relations that you can't get any of them out because they also minimally generate the semigroup C. And this is, uh, this tells you, this is the reason why in that example I said, because of this happening, it is a glue. Okay. So what is it saying that if this is how you pick, then the ideal of A is C is ideal of A plus ideal of B plus exactly one extra element. Just two numerical semigroups can always be glued because in our definition, if you give me two things, if, as long as you can get K1 and K2, such that K1A union K2B has the property KI of C is I of A plus I of B plus one element, it is a gluing. And this tells you, yep, you can do it. We can always find a K1 in the semigroup, and K, which is not there. That's an easy, lots of them are there because after a point, everything is in the semigroup, right? In the numerical semigroups, there are only finitely many things that you're missing from numbers. So it's easy to find there are infinitely many choices for K1 and K2. So not so hard to find a couple of them that are Re, uh, relatively prime. So, in because it is also an if and only if statement, we know which groups are gluing. That is, we know how to glue them also. And we need to do is to find K1 and A2 satisfying these conditions. What will it mean if we know we can glue these two things? This is one of the theorems from a while ago where we are saying that if you have A and B to finite subsets that are gluing, <laughs> like this, let's say with this row I write like that, then if I have the minimal graded resolutions FA and FB of KA and KB, then the minimal graded free resolution of KC is the mapping cone of this, FA tensor B to FA tensor B, where rho is indu induced with the multiplication. This map is a multiplication by rho. In fact, all of them just are multiplication by rho, all the elements in that. And that is, a, and then you take the mapping cylinder or cone or whatever it is we call. And that is the resolution of KG, K joint C. So once you have that, you can get a bunch of consequences from the theorem. And the writing say you can get the, what can you get out of that? You can get the Betty numbers or like this. And then, of course, this side has i, this side has j, so they should be the same. So if you switch around the j's, you know, a and b gives the c. The gluing of a and b is the same as the gluing of b and a. So uh, because of that, you will get this if I switch it, which otherwise you might not think are true for any a. And if you just pick an a and a b, it wouldn't happen that these things are the same. But if it, a and b are such that it can be glued, it is true. The relation between the projected dimensions is because it was A tensor B that we have A tensor FB and you are, glue, uh, you are taking the mapping cones, I'm going to get one more. So the projected dimension of A times plus projected dimension of K join B plus one. Then you can also get the regularity, which is another invariant. You just can't. The reason is you after you, from the resolution, you can also get a more complicated looking formula uh, for the graded, uh, uh, for the Betty numbers with the, um, the signs, the graded ones, with the shifts in the resolution of K join C, you will be given in terms of these, and that takes up a little bit to write, which I didn't write, but you know if you can do that, you can try compute the regularity and the Hilbert series from the fact that you know those numbers in the resolution. 
So for a numerical semigroup, uh, the Frobenius number two, yeah, this is the other one, which comes as here, the Frobenius number of the C is K1 times that of A plus K1 times that of B plus K1, K2. And it's really nice if K1 and K2, if C is just A and B, if K1 and K2 are one, then of course, if FC is FA plus FB plus one, thought I wrote that, yeah. FC is FA plus FB plus one, and the regularity is just the regularity of A plus regularity of B in that case, right? Because when I set in K1, K plus equals K2 equals one, that other one just, uh, uh, it reduces to this, the other formula. You also can get a differential graded algebra structure. If A and B has a, the resolution of A and B has it, then the resolution of C has it because the transfer product does, and so does the mapping cylinder in this particular case. Okay, so K1 and K2 is a multiplication which makes it an associated graded, committed to differential graded algebra. Then C, which is K1A plus K2B is the minimal resolution of A and B admitted differential graded algebra structure, then so does the minimal resolution of C. In fact, C would inherit the structure from that of A and B that you can actually explain once you know what the multiplication is on FA and the FB, you can you actually have an explicit multiplication on the resolution of K adjoint C from the multiplication of K and K joint B. So recall the definition of the gluing. We'll come back to say, uh, if I have this A1, A and B, the way we know it is a gluing is if only the, uh, if I see is I A plus I B plus one extra element. And we had a very nice way to tell if it is a numerical semigroup, but in now we want to try to do it for higher dimension. The theorem that I showed with uh, before about uh, what happens to the resolution, that has, of course, didn't say anything about being a numerical semigroup. It was just true for everything, every, all dimensions, all of those uh, things. So um, we will know. Once you know to glue A and B, we certainly, uh, once C is, once if you give me two semigroups A and B, and if C is a gluing of A and B, then I know the resolution of C from that of A and B building up. And therefore I know all its Betty numbers, predicted dimension and all that, and all of those things that we talked about, except uh, uh, the Frobenius numbers, because obviously uh, we can't say uh, we will uh, talk a little bit later on that uh, kind of thing uh, for the uh, when it, when you're in a higher dimension. Otherwise, everything else we said in the consequence that we were talking about differential graded algebra structure, all of that is good for any dimension because the theorem or the consequences didn't use the fact. I mean, nothing that we were saying. I still had this bold form. A1, A2, AP, they are still vectors and B1, B2, BQ in the theorem. Two non degenerate Carmichael groups, semi groups, cannot be glued if n is bigger than or equal to two. So if I take C as A and B, a gluing of two Carmichael non degenerate semi groups, say. So as matrices, it's going to be A and B. That's what is uh, gluing, right? I'm just generated the semi-group is generated by things in A and things in B. So I write, I just, instead of writing K1A and K2B, I wrote A and B. Let's say you included the K1 in A and K2 inside it, say. The, so this is a matrix of size N by P plus Q, where A is N by P and B is N by Q. And then A is non-degenerate, so the rank of A is N. Because you know they are both non-degenerate, but anyway, A is non-degenerate. If the rank is n, the rank of C is also n, because it got only n rows. And then, so the projective dimension of A plus projective uh, plus depth of A is P. That's just the Auslander books form. So you get projective dimension is P minus n, and projective dimension of B is Q minus n. C is a gluing of A and B. We know the projective dimension is just 
project the sum of the projected dimension plus one. So that's equal to that. So it is p plus q minus 2n plus 1, which has to be bigger than or equal to p plus q minus n, because remember, uh, uh, the dimension or uh, uh, c is also generated so in c has dimension n. So if this is true, only can happen if n is 1. I mean, and we get it, and that's the, so we cannot glue. So what can we glue? Dimension in numerical semigroups, of course, n equals 1, we can certainly do. But if not, when can we glue? So if you have an n by p matrix, and b is just a matrix with one thing in it, n by q, and if k1 is something that is relatively prime to all of these guys, and k2 is any positive integer, and of course, relatively prime to k1, then this is a gluing. So this says, as long as this B is in the semi-group generated by A, that it isn't anything really new, I can glue. A little better than that is we cannot, thus we can always glue an N by one matrix to an N by P matrix, provided that single column is already in the semi-group of the previous matrix. That's what we were saying. This is the reason we were able to do it in dimension one, because in dimension one, you give me a number uh, uh, as big enough multiple of it will always be in the semi-group, because after a point, everything is in the semi-group. That's why we have this notion of Frobenius number and all that. But in a higher dimension, we cannot say, if you give me a vector B, a suitable multiple will always find itself in the semi-group of A. So what does it mean? So if A is an n by p matrix of rank n, and if B is like this, then A and B can be glued if and only if a suitable multiple of B is in the semigroup of A, which is to say Ax equals db has a solution in the positive non-negative integers um, for some positive integer d. Otherwise, we cannot say this is the actually also if and only if in this case. There's something you can do. And not only that, that just tells you when you can glue. And this tells you how we can choose this K1. Remember, it is going to be K1A and K2B, how to choose them. So if I take the smallest positive integer D such that AX equals DB has a solution in NP, and the smallest positive integer such that ax equals sb has a solution in the um, in integers instead of non-negative integers. So this is sab. Then k1a union k2b is a gluing if and only if this d divided by the gcd of d and k2 equals this. So look at that. It only depends on what the k2 is, the whole thing. And K1 can be just anybody that is relatively prime to K2 that you can put there. Okay. So this is the uh, uh, glue. This is how we can glue once you know that uh, gluing is possible because there is a solution to this. So I think put an example just like that. So the example is if I just picked this two by four matrix and B is just the simple one, one. Five times, five, five is in here, you know. So D is five. And in fact, you know, why S is five? Because I can actually, if you pick K1, well, you can always first thing to try maybe. If K1 equals K2 equals one, then write it like that. It is indeed a gluing of KA and KC, KA and KB, C is a gluing in that case. And in any way, S is 5, you can also just, it's just a 2 by 4 matrix. You want to find out what is the smallest multiple of 1 by 1, 1, 1, that is, uh, that has a solution when I say AX equals DB in integers, it will also be 5. And the K and KC here are not also Cohen Macaulay because this is the minimal resolution of. Ka and of course Ka is not Cohen Macaulay. You probably this is the same example we saw before, and Kc is not Cohen Macaulay because Ka is not. So here's another one. If oh, somehow it went back. Yeah. 
So if A is an N by P matrix of rank N, well, that's just the kind of thing. If it is not, we can assume it is of rank N because yeah, by removing one of the rows. And B is an N by Q matrix of rank one, then A and B can be glued if the multiple of one of the columns of B is in A, just one column of B. Now, B actually looks like this because B is of rank one. So I could write B as U1, B, U2, B, U, Q, B, where B is just this common factor because all the columns are multiples of each other, right? If it's of rank one over rational numbers, I clear denominator, I write like that. Then A and B can be glued if and only if X equals DB as a solution in NP, and that's it. This B, that is one of the columns, is in the semigroup of A. We can choose K1 relatively prime to B1, B2, Bn, which we know we had to do just to glue just that one guy, if and if Q is one, and K to any positive integer. Oh, I wanted to say, yeah satisfying the condition in the previous theorem. I, I should actually have said something different here. K1, I want it to be in the semi-group generated by U and U2, UQ. I don't know why I didn't put that in. Yeah, sorry. This U and U2, UQ, it is relatively prime. That is a condition in the previous theorem. I want K1 to be, I just went over it last night and didn't notice that. K1 needs to be in the semi-group generated by U1, U2, UQ, and, and also relatively prime to B1, B2, Bn. That was the condition, yeah. Anyway, here is an example. As the ideal is the defining ideal of the twist, some people call it is the twisted cubic, or it's just the ideal of the two by two minus of this two by three matrix. So it's going to call it. Emma, there's a question. So you can't. Yeah. Yeah. Can we use gluing in this way oh. for tangent cone? Oh. Yeah, this is the question. Can we use mm -hmm. gluing this way in for the tangent cone? I guess um, semi group yeah. ring. Uh, Osgur Ins. Yeah. Yeah, this is a question from Osgur Ins. Uh, Osgur, can you ask your question? What? What? Can we? Uh, is there a chat thing that I should be able yeah, to read? Yeah, it's in the chat box. Yeah. Uh, I have to find where it is oh, now. So I will read it. it so I'm sorry. It, I uh, question says. Anyway, oh, I yeah. don't know actually because I have to. I don't know. Okay, okay. Okay, let me think about it I, uh, the, uh, and say if it is, yeah. So if S cannot be, uh, I should know actually how to figure out where the chat is to be able to uh, see. I see there is again, you are presenting meeting details. No, no. I don't uh, see. Uh, on the top of the screen, uh, there, there are, you see. Oh, chat with you. Now I see it. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, I see. Can we use this for tangent cone? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I don't know what to answer to that. I don't know. So let me go for that. Yeah, I now see where the chat, what the chat looks like in this. The icons look a little different, and I don't notice them. So, OK. Now, yeah, this is Con Macaulay, and we already saw two non-degenerate Con Macaulay thing. This is not degenerate, right? That uh, you can look at the matrix and see it as dimension uh, rank two cannot be glued. So, but you can glue two degenerate semigroups, A and B. So what I'm doing is I'm taking that A and I'm adding a zero to that. Okay, and then looks like this is really it looks different. But really, the K A and K C, K B, K A joint B are the same two by two I uh, minus of a two by three uh, matrix, and uh, they they are the really the same uh, rings. Uh, the K A joint A and K A joint B, the semigroup rings are the same as that K as as that S. They are just embedded in this three dimension thing in a different way. 
and but then they can be glued now. So they weren't, you can't glue them in N2, but when I moved them up to N3 and put them in some different ways, I'm able to put them together. And uh, then there is a possibility of gluing them in A union B. Uh, this is, if I just take K1 equals one and K2 equals one, then the ideal of uh, this matrix, which has got eight, uh, three rows and eight columns, then that one has uh, the, the ideal of that is ideal of A plus ideal of B is exactly one element, which is Y1 squared uh, minus X1, X4 squared. So this is the X1 and this is X4. If I just multiply this by two, I get four plus two, which is six. And this is six, so six, six, that's the same as twice this, right? Six, six. So we could see that you can glue A and B in this case, which are two uh, matrices, three by four matrices. Right? And my B is not in this particular case um, uh, my, uh, of rank one or anything, it's rank two and you're gluing, but of course my A is also not of rank uh, three. It's not a full rank, it is a degenerate case. And the theorem that I mentioned as to when and how you can glue where we start with A being non-degenerate. So for two dimension now, here's something we can say. If A and B be two finite subsets of N2, the only way we can glue is, is B has, and they are both Cohen Macaulay, say KA and KB or Cohen Macaulay. Then A and B can be glued if and only if B has only one element or there's many, if B has more columns, the matrix B, and but then it is of rank one, which is the same thing as saying AX times DB as a solution in NP for some D. In that case C is a gluing, then case of A and B, and case C is Cohen Macaulay, KA and KB are Cohen Macaulay, we are assuming that. So we were wondering how come we are able to do this only for this crazy case of such strong restriction on B, right? We are saying that B has an element in it or uh, B has um, all the vectors in B lie on a line or it's of rank one. So for a while we were wondering why, and then it turns out we could uh, see, oh, I have an example I should say. Okay, so let's say if A, if this is an example with that, uh, how you pick. So I have this example which you already saw, this A, and then I pick this B like this, where B is 1, 1. We know the multiple of 1, 1, which is 5, 5 is in here. So A and K, B can be glued. We also know that this is that 11, 17, 25, and 19. If you picked K1 equals 28, see, it, it needs to be in the U1, U2, U3, U4. So 28 is a number that's in U1, U2, U3, E4. And K2, I pick to be five. Then I get that to be a glue. So, and IC equals IA plus IB plus rho because it is really X1, X4 minus Y1, Y2 in this particular case. X1 times X4 is five, five. And if I picked not quite five, five, because I take K1 equals 28, so it is going to be five times 28 and five times 28. And then Y1, Y2 with my K2 to be five is going to be five times 28 and five times 28, because 11 plus 17 is five times 28. So this is a blue wheel, as an just an example for that theorem. And then this is what the resolutions look like. And then they, we get the resolution of KC from the theorem. So all of these, so all, K, all are called Macaulay and KB is degenerate and called Macaulay too. Because we started out with everybody being Macaulay. If we change that K1 to two, which is not in us, it can't be a gluing because remember it just said that you need it for it to be a gluing that K1 has to be in the semi-group generated by U1, U2, U3, and U, Q. 
but it behaves like an iteration of simple splits in this kind of way. Which is something that I uh, later may talk about. So this is the answer to the case. Why in the world in that previous thing that we theorem, uh, uh, in which is a paper that is in the uh, yeah, uh, semi-group forum, I think, uh, where I had such strong, yeah, which is a paper that is in the semi-group program uh, uh, pu published. And that is the, well, the why we had such a strong requirement on the rank of B. And uh, this is uh, uh, this is a theorem which says, uh, which uh, uh, the, uh, Philip and I recently proved, if A is in A1, A2, A, P, and B is like this, two finite subsets again, and let C be a gluing of A and B. This, of course, is just coming from the fact that uh, uh, the, uh, when it is a gluing, that the projected dimension adds up. Just uh, uh, the dual of uh, uh, a standard book form, you get the depth formula. In, here is something else that is true: that the dimension of K adjoint C is actually the dimension of K adjoint A plus dimension of K adjoint B minus one. So if A is not degenerate. The only way we can glue A and B is if B has rank 1. That is precisely the result we had in the theorem of one and I. So that it's not like you cannot glue if B doesn't. If everybody, if things are not degenerate, I, can, I have to have this to be of rank 1 in order to glue. I was going to write the proof of that, but let me see. I might still have the time, but... Uh, uh, I will see if I do uh, uh, talk about the proof. Um, probably not. So let's just say what all we can get out of that. An easy thing is that if A and B can be glued and C is a gluing of A and B, then K joint C is called Macaulay if and only if K joint A and K joint B are. Because I have the uh, look at this. To pro, uh, things, if the, to be called Macaulay means depth must equals the dimension, and so if uh, A and B the depth is equal, this equation is satisfied. Then if these two are equal, then obvious the, this this side it is equal K A and K B. This will be the same, and if that is the depth, then this is also the dimension, right? They look exactly like it, so that's why it's true. And it is Gorenstein if and only if K A and K B are. We already saw that if uh, K A and yeah, this one was not something specially coming from this. This was the result. Yeah, this was the result. Uh, uh, this came just from the previous uh, uh, gluing theorem that we had uh, by saying the uh, resolutions of K A and K B. Uh, uh, is gotten in the as a mapping cylinder when I take the resolution of A and resolution of B and cancel with them. And so only way for KC to be Gorenstein is if K A and KB are, and if K A and KB are Gorenstein, then KC is Gorenstein because you know uh, you are first of all Cohen-Macaulay, and you can just measure it by the last um, uh, uh, the free module in the resolution. And it's a complete intersection. This is of course. Uh, uh, really, the say similar to the theorem of uh, Delorme. So we now can get a complete result in uh, for dimension two uh, with uh, a one a p and b one b two b q to finite subsets. A and b can be glued if and only if one of the two subsets. For example, B say satisfies the following conditions: either it has only one element, or B is written like that, and A has a solution in N P for some D. Right? This was the the same theorem that we had before, except now I don't no longer say A and B have to be called Macaulay in order for this to be true, because it's not necessary. Okay. I think that may be one more thing I want to say, okay. 
if A and B are AI and BI in an N, suppose the rank of A, B is M, is something, and B, A and B can be glued if and only if, when I take the rank of A and the rank of B, it's minus one is the rank of A, B. The rank of A, B is actually is M, then it is rank of A plus rank of B is M plus one. And the system, that's one of the conditions. The second condition is by just having that is not enough for you to glue because we already know that from the previous one, right? Uh, when B has rank one and A and C has ranked then same M, we have one more condition, namely that K1 has to be in the semi-group generated by U and U to UQ. So it's not just by itself, it's not enough we know. We need to know this too, that K1, AX, K2, BY has solutions in non-negative integers for some relatively prime integers, K1 and K2. And so if we have both of these, this is not so big deal, but uh, because I could just take up this as A and B, but I need to have this in order for us to tell it is a, in this case, we can prove it is a gluing and then we need, uh, one direction is actually quite easy, right? If it is a gluing, we can show this is true. But the thing is, it's also true if uh, uh, the other way, that if this is there, then I can write IC as IA plus IB plus that one extra element coming out of this relation. Okay. So thank you. And uh, I hope to see everybody in the when the pandemic yeah. ends very soon, it looks like. So there is a lot more hope uh, that it will be. Uh, thank you, Hema, uh, for your nice talk. We now take questions from audience. You can unmute yourself. Yeah, you can unmute yourself and ask questions. Uh, excuse me, uh, may I ask a question? Uh, yeah. Can, uh, probably I don't uh, understand the gluing well, but could you glue A and A, same A, by different integers K1 and K2? Uh, uh, yeah, but then I want my K1. Yeah, uh, I can't write, right? Because I decided to leave that iPad away. So let us say I have two integers like five and seven and another five and seven. So what will I be able to glue? If I take a K1, which is say 12, and uh, I pick uh, something like um, 19. So I take 12 times five and seven, and 19 times five and seven. So that is 60, let me see. 12 times five, I get a 60, and let me write that down. 60, 5 and 7, so 12 times 7 is 84, and 19 times 5 is 95, and 19 times 7 is whatever it is, huh? 133, it looks like, right? So that is a gluing of two things, right? Which is will be a, so I'm getting something with four numbers, and that will be a complete intersection. Yes. yes. Is it, for just in the numerical semi-group case, that was just writing uh, two things, yes. But when it, it just so happens that, uh, and we saw this example in uh, uh, dimension two, where I had a gluing of uh, two semi-groups, which are exactly the same, except that I had to go into uh, one more dimension simply because they happen to be Cohen Macaulay. Mm, thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions? So in the Google Meet, I have a question. Is there a way that you get a word also where you can write? No? 
yeah there is a jam board uh, one can open ah, that but you, you should have the yeah, like the white sheer board on the zoom i guess yeah i had to have learned that before it's anyway how you can write <laughs> i see okay yeah, it's called jam board yeah ah, okay so uh, anyway i had a question if you give yeah. two two matrices and construct the semi group ring uh, can we relate their multiplicities yeah because we have the relations we have the whole resolution and the graded resolution with numbers in them you know so all those thing anything you can get out of a uh, any information that you can get out of a uh free resolution like multiplicity you can yeah you can compute it yes okay, okay. and write a formula for it yes okay yeah the uh, district hi. in the case of um uh, uh, numerical semi groups is kind of uh, uh, there but i think you're right yeah one probably should, that is something that would be kind of lots of little things like some of the other thing is also true somebody asked uh might not to uh, hear and and another time saying when i said that two things are going macaulay then c is going macaulay and all that you could do that for other things like you know uh conditions like this s2 and r with several other conditions that people have if a and b has the c have because things that are to do with just depths and dimension again that those the, the all of those things with the depths come through simply because the resolution is there and that's why and the projected dimension comes from that mm -hmm. hi also i have a question uh, assume that you have a two non decreasing hilbert function uh, if they glue together what can say about their hilbert function decreasing or not not decreasing anything else i'm sorry i didn't know what functions uh if you have two semi group and they are uh, non decreasing hilbert function oh they have a non decreasing hilbert function yes if they glue together ah. what can say say about their hilbert function are they decreasing or non, non decreasing anything else yeah good question actually i think uh, you should be able to make some interesting statement from that right from the resolutions and maybe because we have the hilbert function i haven't actually thought about it but as it is very interesting is something one should do say something about what are the things you could do yeah and uh, yeah you should be able to do but uh, this is not something i have actually thought about okay thank you thank you for your uh, talk also yeah thank you uh all right any other questions uh, hello ma'am i have a question yeah yes yeah so in case of numerical semi groups you explicitly gave us the formula of the frobenius number of the gluing yeah is there any information known about the pseudo frobenius numbers because we know a lot more things about the resolution right yeah 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 uh the but the pseudo frobenius numbers uh these are uh, numbers that are not uh yeah there is actually you are right yeah i should you should be i just wrote this uh, 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 uh formula for the frobenius number for the numerical semi group the, because last time i came to iit bombay so, and they talked about uh, this some uh, i think it was uh, Madhusudan, who asked, "Oh no, no, why couldn't you write? Since you are just talking about regularity, you haven't said anything about the Frobenius number." So I thought I'll calculate that and write it down. So uh, and that's uh, yeah. You should try. Uh, yeah, go back through that uh, thing, and they are also related. I think uh, the, from that the pseudo Frobenius numbers too. So I I should probably you should you can look at it and do that um, as a. uh uh the thing to do you know from the competition and see where it comes yeah it yeah, it should it, the all the result uh, information i have is from the resolution and and uh, and the uh thing so you could try to see if that helps that, 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 yeah. since we know yeah. so much about the resolution and the bitting numbers yeah yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. you should yes i didn't do the uh, thing and i just actually only last uh, uh, 
last night I added that thing with the Fovinius number because I don't remember, I don't know I'm talking and I hate Yvonne, I should put that in and so you ask the next one to say. Yeah. Uh, Imam, may I just uh, sort of uh, uh, continue in the, along the same line what Kriti said. Actually, uh, for the numerical semi-group rings, uh, the last Betty number will give you the type. That is exactly yes, the number right. of pseudo-Frobenius mm -hmm. numbers. So that much. Yeah, can... that's a total yeah. number. Yeah, right. Yeah. The type is actually that formula I didn't write. So the type of C is type of A times multiplied by type of B. Exactly. So that is an, an, uh, that's a formula. I think I didn't write in this one uh, board. It is also in the paper. So type of, it comes also, I, I think I wrote the formula for the Hilbert series, but not the type in that. So type of, type actually multiplies. And that just yeah. tells you the number of pseudo uh, Frobenius number, exactly and like That's the last Betty number, essentially. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and ma'am, one last thing, is your paper on archive, the preprint one? Uh, the one on semi-group four apparently is uh, published. I don't know, they sent apparently, uh, whatever it is, the link uh, for that, which I didn't see, um, but it is on archive too. Uh, I, I, uh, but I think they, uh, so that's already in the, maybe if you go to their webpage, it should be there in the uh, uh, general webpage and it is in the archive. The preprint is not in the archive yet. The uh, one I'm talking, the the last couple of things that I talked about, about the dimension formula and the depth and things, I, I we haven't yet put in the archive. We are still thinking we are adding something to it. Uh, and uh, somehow this, uh, uh, even though we can meet on Zoom and Skype, we uh, things have been a little strange this whole summer and the semester. We didn't get around to doing it yet. Yeah, I, I would really love to look at that paper. Yeah, I, it, well, we hope we can quickly do that at least over the, um, now that the semester is over in a couple of weeks. I hope we can put it together soon. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Thank you for such an interesting yeah. talk. It was really helpful. Thanks. I also want to say another one of the people, for former um, students, and from an alumni of IIT Bombay, um, uh, Papri Day, she's here with me and uh, as a postdoc and is working on um, something with the semi-group rings. Um, the case of, um, we are uh, in not in the higher dimension, the numerical semi-group, because there's so many things to be, I mean, we don't know everything about numerical semi-group, even though I said it is well studied because many of the things are there and then now it seems like a chaos. We are looking at it as a principal matrix. And so we need to look at it closely to try to find, understand the structure. So that's somebody else uh, who's also working um, on the numerical semi-group thing. And I know she didn't, she did graduate from IIT Bombay. So that's so, some of you. Probably Jewel might have known her. I don't think uh, I, she maybe. I think she was a. She studied the same time as Parangama. It seems. Uh, she yeah, maybe... she's from electrical department. I think. Huh. She is yeah. from electrical. She did under Harish. Uh, Harish Pillai. Property sorry. day. You are talking about property day. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. All right, so uh, I don't see uh, any other questions for Hema. All right, so I don't see any further questions. Uh, so Hema, thanks a lot for uh, such an interesting talk and coming online. Uh, we hope to see you next year in Mumbai as usual. And uh, yeah, so uh, our next seminar is on Friday by Eldo Konka, and he will speak on ideals and algebras uh, associated with uh, subspace arrangements. So uh, we will close the meeting today again. Thank, thanks, Sema, and uh, we will thank meet you. on Friday. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.